minutes before the call with actually having them render and uh, yeah, some some little some little error, but anyway. <laughs> uh, one of those cases where I, I, I did the notes this weekend and uh, said, oh yeah, I should come back and touch this and uh, <laughs> bear with me. Um, hope, hope you like looking at, uh, at Visual Studio Code. <laughs> or aren't too offended. Um, okay. All right, and you should be seeing my screen momentarily if you don't already. We we do indeed. Do you see Visual Studio Code? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, there's usually a little sh kind of bar around the screen that indicates what I'm sharing and I'm not seeing it now, but anyway. Um, so uh, this, this whole lesson is about, uh, or this section is uh, is about in injecting. Um, so um, I'm going to try to cover uh, basically what we would otherwise find in this section right here. So <laughs> under metaprogramming, uh, injecting uh, with bang 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 bang, and then using GlueSack syntax to inject. Uh, other things. Um, didn't really get back to uh, learning objectives, but uh, <laughs> I guess really, really, it's just you know why why inject uh, or what's going on with injection. So I, really, I guess kind of the first thing to start with is you know what is what does injection do? Um, and I think this in simplest terms is it, it it kind of modifies our code before our kind of processes it, um, and it does so with some operators. Uh, namely the operators that I just mentioned. So um, in Arlang, bang, 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 uh, and then um, the, the glue, uh, glue syntax. So there are these two kind of families uh, of, of injection operators uh, that really help deal with kind of the two different, two different um, patterns. Uh, so one dealing with dynamic dots um, and then the other dealing with, with metaprogramming. Uh, so for dynamic dots, it's bang, 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 um, as well as, uh, as well as the um, uh, embrace operator. Um, and, and then, or rather uh, not embrace operator, but uh, blue strings, we'll see more on that in a bit. Um, and then with metaprogr uh, metaprogramming, we're going to look at all of the all of the multitudinous following, um, uh, so everything before. So first, let's start with with dynamic dots. Um, so with dynamic dots, there's there's kind of a way that you can pass the dots uh, in base in base R. You basically are kind of forwarding, in effect, like forwarding arguments from let's say your function that you're writing as a developer to another function that that consumes it. That, your function wraps in some in some fashion, um, and you can collect those those uh, those arguments kind of in a in a few structures, uh, you know, either just the combine uh, C or, or or with or with list, and then and then pass them and pass them on in kind of simple simple fashion uh, to to the to the next to the next function. Um, well, Arlang has 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 kind of a corresponding solution to deal not just with dots, but with dynamic dots. Um, and, and it really, I guess you can think of it as doing exactly what base R's dots do, but with some added features or some added benefits. So with dynamic dots, so I guess once the dance dots are kind of dynamic dots, you can you can operate on them by, by, by splicing. So you can, um, kind of take uh, your your dots and then splice them apart into a set of operators using the bang 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 operator, and and also you can uh, so that's for dealing with kind of arguments. If you want to uh, inject not um, kind of expressions but names, uh, you can you can use um, the the glue um, glue syntax like the following to. Or bring a name forward, so you can have some expression inside your function, like you know my my name, um, uh, you know equals whatever your your value is. Uh, we'll look at each one of those in, in turn, but just to give a little bit of a of a roadmap. So again, uh, kind of in your mind, think of dynamic dots as like like base R dots, 
and just know that uh, uh, dynamic dots with an Rlang, you have some additional things that you can do that Rlang brings brings to your your toolkit. So first, we'll look at at splicing arguments. Um, so how does you know the kind of like the generic problem here is that you know you have a list of arguments that um, you want to pass from your function to a function that it wraps, um, and you know as mentioned earlier, base R has a solution, and then Rlang has has another solution. Uh, so for base R, the solution would look a little something like this. Let's just take for for I'll, I'll do like the book, or sorry, not the book, but rather the 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 vignette. Um, and and kind of take R bind um, as as kind of our, our our function that we'll use throughout to demonstrate this principle. So, with R bind, you know, uh, you, you you take you can take uh, some dots. So here R bind, and then you have uh, basically vectors um, uh, that are kind of a set of named vectors um, that are that are your arguments. So you can kind of think of these like formally, you know, in terms of if you look at the documentation that these are these are vectors, but they're kind of <laughs> list-ish in a certain sense, right? So you, if you have a collection of vectors, you can kind of think of it loosely loosely as a list. Um, and, and if, and if in, in fact, you wanted to actually treat it as a list, there's a way that you can capture all of your arguments in a list and then pass it to rbind, but it involves a few kind of uh, little steps right here. So let's take our same set, uh, same set of arguments right here. Um, a equals one to two, B equals three and four. Um, and what we can do is, uh, rather than kind of have a call to rbind directly, we're going to use this kind of do call construct. Uh, and what you can do is you can you can say, uh, basically pass these, you know, let's call these rows, I guess, uh, maybe a little confusingly, this list, list we'll call it the rows that are going to be bound together by rbind. Uh, and then you can pass it to rbind in this fashion, rbind will output what you expect. And, It'll do exactly the same thing as as you see here. So in that way, you can kind of conceive of these these dynamic dots as a, a list of a list of arguments, and you can pass a list of arguments to rbind. You just need to approach the function in, in a different fashion, but base R's got your back. Um, now this works a little bit differently with 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 rlang. Um, so with rlang, you know, let's let's just Let's create another function we'll call rbind2 um, that um, will take take dots um, at this point there, I guess base dots. Um, and that will kind of perform a similar operation to what we saw above. Um, but instead, it'll take these dots and through the magic of um, rlang list2, which uh, we'll go into maybe time allowing into a little greater detail, basically kind of transforms them into dynamic dots, if you will. Uh, and then we can perform the same operation right here, uh, this do call um, where we're uh, passing this list of arguments to, to rbind. Um, and it works exactly the same as, as, um, as rbind does uh, above. Um, so, you may, but you may want to kind of pass to to rbind to um, a list, a list of things, like formally a list of things, um, and then and then work with that list. So you can you can do it in the following way. So you can directly invoke rbind to um, past it this this rows. So this is the same the same list of of um, of arguments that we saw before. So we're specifying a set of vectors to bind together. Um, and uh, you can you can do the following. So have R bind two, and then um, using this splice operator, uh, splicing operator, bind, uh, sorry, bang, bang, bang. Uh, you can basically, in effect, like transform this list object. It splices it into its constituent parts. So the set of uh, set of um, how do you call it? Uh, set of vectors. So really, kind of the way it would get resolved is almost you can kind of take this and mentally like, copy and paste it into uh, what you what you see here. And then R bind two will do exactly what you what you expect of it. So here you could pass it, you know, as you can see, you can pass it this list object um, where you kind of gather together your your, your set of arguments um, into a list structure and then you know provide a set of arguments, one argument being 
kind of a list that's getting that's getting um, um, spliced before evaluation, and, and and then you know another another vector. I'll stop here and see if there are any any comments questions. <laughs> Good so far. Good so yeah. far. Okay. Um, I think I ended up rewriting this a little bit as compared to the vignette. It's a bit of a funny, funny example, but interesting, interesting way to show how splicing works. Um, so, uh, whoops. Um, so just as you can, um, with with with. Um, with dynamic dots, you can you can inject you know I guess we'll say like inject um, arg um, you know expressions and you can splice arguments. You can also inject names. Um, so this may not be the most um, engaging example from from the vignette, <laughs> but nevertheless it kind of shows shows the principle. Um, so let's imagine that we have some name. Um, that that we wanted to uh, um, um, kind of pass to pass to the function. Um, you know, this is the uh, uh, I guess canonical foo bar uh, example. <laughs> um, so let's have some name called foo that would be a user user provided name. You can inject that into the into the function in in the following way um, with with rlang. So you can have um, I mean, imagine you know, with R R bind two, um, you know, we again have this uh, like named um, named arguments like we do with R bind. So here we have bar, um, but let we want this to be foo. So the way in which we can basically pass this name to the function is is with uh, this uh, this kind of glue glue expression. Um, so basically, where this name uh, the value of name that's available in this case in the global environment is just going to uh, be substituted here uh, as the name, and importantly, we have to use this little wall walrus operator in this particular case. Uh, and in that way, we can basically have uh, what we expect. We can have you know a data frame coming out of this that would be uh, you know um, have one one row named uh, one row named foo and another row named uh, bar. I just can I want to share my uh, my mnemonic for remembering. Uh, to use the walrus, that uh, the colon is because you have to digest the thing on the left before you send it to <laughs> equals. I like that. I really like that. Yeah, I, it took, I mean, you know, walrus is nice. Like it reminds you what it looks like, but it has no relationship to what it does. What it does, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think that, that that should that should get into like the common lexicon of uh, like uh, our link. Um, so I guess it's kind of like the digest equals or something like that. Uh, it, it digested is is what I I say. So nice name name digested is one to two. So <laughs> you could go with like the classic. Just go with the Beatles and the line is like I am the walrus. I'm the walrus. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever the walrus is, you replace with what's in the brackets. <laughs> That was my first instinct too, Gus. But it, it's a little less like uh, like evocative of like function. Uh, yeah, uh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but and, and you can obviously like kind of you you can do more than just kind of copy paste names into place, as you can see here on on, on the next on the next line. So uh, you know if you if you wanted to do some transformations uh, of 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 user provided names, then then you could do so. Um, uh maybe let's imagine you have some function that's performing uh, doing some computations and you have a user provided name and you want to generate a column that has the average and all, a column that has the median etc um so you you can perform these kind of name manipulation operations still with 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 glue so you can in my case i have some arbitrary prefix and then the the name and this is just going to resolve to prefix underscore in this case foo um uh, as as the name of uh, of this row in this particular case, uh, so that's that's something that's really nice that could be done. Um, all right, moving now on to metaprogramming. Um, so 
here we wanted to in, in with meta programming we want to we're going to shift away from dynamic dots and move towards just kind of um uh meta programming where we're going to basically have uh you know variables um injected or sorry rather rather uh variable names or expressions kind of injected into certain parts of of our code um so let's imagine that we have this this uh to see how this works uh in practice we, we've seen this previous in previous um uh sessions but uh to see how this works in practice uh, let's imagine we have some mean by function that just takes the mean of something by um mean of some column by um grouping by some other column um, so here you'd have a, this function that would take data, the by variable, and the variable um, uh, to compute the mean of. Um, and with our curly curly or embrace operator, however you want to call it, you, you could basically have those those variables um, effectively kind of uh, injected into your into the, the body of your function kind of uh, at runtime. Um, so in order to do so, you just need to use the, these operators and, and provide the name of the thing that you want to basically appear here at run at runtime. Um, so th these will end up being kind of symbols that uh, so you're, you're in effect like you're injecting like a symbol, I guess in a certain sense into 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 your data environment. So if if I if I wanted to, you know, um, call by if I want my by variable to be cylinders here, then this is this is a column that exists in the in the data environment. Um, uh, so in the environment of the the data frame that I pass to it, so namely empty cars. But with this this kind of uh, injection of expressions, you can also um, inject kind of a, a call or um, on a symbol that exists in the data environment. So you can inject like more of an interesting expression potentially. Um, so here you could, uh, I, I could have the empty cars data set grouped by cylinder and then let the variable be, you know, displacement times 100 and this will still work. Uh, so all that to say, like when you're embracing, in a sense, I, my, my kind of loose understanding is you're, you're, you're really embracing an, an expression to a certain extent, like an expression that can be um, evaluated within, within the context where you're you're, you're, you're passing it. So in this case, like in, in the data environment within the data frame. Which I found a little surprising. I personally, I, I just have limited myself to this, this kind of approach uh, where I'm just passing a, the name of a column. Yeah, the, uh, the call is, I think, where the, like, where our line is necessary is you can get by with, um, you know, like capturing the or, or quoting what they sent in, basically, uh, yep. uh, just getting the text representation of the column and deal with it from there. But the, you know, just getting a text representation of disp times 100. The, oh, no, there's a lot more you have to do there. So, yep. um, yeah. All right. Um, so I guess this is, you know, in meta programming world, this is kind of the first way that you can inject. Um, you can inject. Um, so using curly curly or uh, the embrace operator, however you want to call it. Um, uh, there's another way, which I guess is sort of the old old fashioned way, if I can put it that, uh, in, that in that sense. Um, I guess this is this is before the advent of curly curly. Let's let's put it that way. Um, so you can still you can also use bang bang um, to to uh, evaluate uh, to to kind of inject, um, but the trouble is with bang bang it needs to come with with the pair of of, of quoting the expression. Um, so it might look something like like this in practice. This is a very minimalistic um, uh, example for kind of variables that are environment variables where you want to inject an environment variable. Let's say so imagine you have in your global environment, some 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 name of a column that happens to exist within, within the data frame. So you can you can effectively kind of like quote quote the name um, uh, as a variable here, 
So this is kind of diffusing, uh, diffusing the 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 the, the name uh, in a certain sense. Um, actually, it's really not diffusing, but uh, you're capturing this as a symbol that's not going to get evaluated. I guess it is diffusing. Um, um, it's, it's a reference to something, but you're not evaluating that reference. You're just saying this is a this is a symbol, um, and the symbol here with this this rlang function, the symbol that exists within within the data set, uh, that that uh, where you're going to evaluate it. And then if you wanted to perform some summarize operation as here, uh, you can just evaluate evaluate uh, or sorry in, inject this um, um, uh, uh, like evaluate this. Um, by using by using bang bang, so basically, kind of the overall pattern. Maybe this is this is a corner case, but the overall pattern is basically diffuse and then evaluate. Uh, so, uh, or I guess in the sense like diffuse and then inject. Um, and so so whereas curly curly perform both operations at the same time, kind of behind the scenes for you. Here with bang bang, you have to you have to use other means to quote what you're passing, and then use bang bang to to inject it slash evaluate it. So this is the case for kind of the environment variables. If you have some variable that exists in the environment, but obviously you can you can also have um, um, you know, data variables that that exist within the data set. Um, so here you could you could have I'll kind of show two con contrasting cases that'll basically. Uh, uh, I don't know. Demonstrate exactly what I just said. Is you know, let's 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 first uh, let's first kind of do this this whole um, uh, dance of of uh, quote then evaluate. Uh, so basically, in effect, like injecting a variable using bang bang, and then we'll show the exact same thing with uh, with um, embrace. Uh, so with bang bang, uh, it would look something like this. So if you had some function that's going to summarize. Um, uh, that's going to summarize or some, some, some summarize operation on your data frame. You might have a function that takes in a data uh, data frame, and then um, you have some variable. Uh, this would be a, a bare name. Um, so first step is you'd want to to quote it. Uh, so you, you'd quote you'd quote your your, your variable name. So R uh, so R doesn't immediately try to 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 evaluate that that reference to the variable, um, and then then you would want to use uh, your your um, your kind of diffuse variable name of uh, and and uh, inject it into your summarize expression, um, and so that it's evaluated, you put bang bang before it. So, in essence, like you're to in, to inject, you're unquoting names that have been quoted within the context of your function, or you could just do something much simpler with with uh, with the embrace operator. Um, and 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 simply you know have the same function by and large, the only difference being that you no longer have to quote. Uh, instead, you just use the embrace operator, and the embrace operator takes care for you of this whole process of first quoting, then then injecting. It does one both things in in, in one fell swoop. And if I had <laughs> evaluated code here, um, but if I'd had a little bit more time to actually compile my slides. Uh, you would see that these two things yield exactly the same thing. Um, the implementation under the hood is kind of different in a sense, uh, or at least insofar as it's using different functions, but it yields exactly the, the same result. Um, and then lastly, uh, for metaprogramming, um, we've got uh, splicing with, with bang, bang, bang. Uh, and back we go to... Um, to uh, our, our our bind two function from 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 earlier, uh, so you know first up let's kind of compose some list of of arguments, you know vectors a and b that are as before one two and three four, um, and we're going to use our 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 r bind two uh, function here uh, just as, as as kind of a reminder. Uh, so here we've got the function we're passing it the dots. We're doing this little do call bit where we're uh, taking taking this uh, this dynamic dots list and then um, and then uh, passing that to, 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 to our bind under the hoods. So you could do something like this. This is what the kind of interface would look like. R bind two, uh, pass it a list right here that's getting unquoted, um, or sorry, that's getting spliced rather, uh, and then you can pass it some other some other argument if you so desire. 
Now, now this this was this example comes. This is really an example of dynamic dots, right? But you can imagine maybe something where where you're actually using Arlang uh, under under the hood, uh, or sorry, you're you're using um, the the splicing operator under the hood. So here I'm a little uneasy on kind of like how this exactly works. I was trying to work out this example. I think that the the, the vignette doesn't quite cover this, if I remember correctly. Um, but you you could you could basically have a function that looks like this. Uh, so kind of working from the inside out. Uh, on the inside, it looks very very similar to the way in which it looked previously. Um, so uh, the innermost function here, you've you've got our lang list two that's kind of taking those dots. It's it's actually splicing them inside of the function. Um, and then the additional bit is we're, we're using this inject inject uh, function. Um, that's that's kind of evaluating the the, the this the spliced the splice bit, and you can end up with the exact same same result uh, with R bind this function R bind two as you as you did with with uh, with R bind. Actually, let me just uh, to prove that this is the case. Uh, let me just sorry, John, um, uh, for 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 going to the, the terminal. Um, <laughs> It's okay. It's just easier, or you know, yep. it's nice when it can be pre-rendered. But if it isn't, uh, exactly, you know, I, I, it doesn't affect. I ran, I, I ran short on time here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's take this guy, and then we can look at the results here. So if if we if we look at the results of Rbind two, um, you know, we find exactly what we expect, um, and then Rbind two b um, is is exactly the same as as Rbind two. Uh, so just a little bit of a different implementation um, that's that's using that's using the splicing kind of inside of inside of the the, the function, and then adding on this uh, this this R line uh, R -lang inject. Um, inject so is it, handy. Yeah, like I've done workarounds to you know basically creating the R bind two and then. Uh, calling it or whatever it like just being able the inject version is much cleaner and i was just looking through uh the cran or gun github and it is used all over the place that is uh, interesting yeah that is kind of the way to tidyify a lot of packages because a lot of the packages i see it in are tidy something and it's where they're taking this some other package and wrapping it to make it more tidy like and so they're Taking the functions from the other package and using inject to make them work like a tidyverse function. Um, so yeah, handy. So so John, <laughs> like making them more tidy from what you've observed, is it is it more like on the implementation, like the internal implementation, or more on the interface? Because uh, what I found it, like a little surprising is that, you know, let's say if I take if I don't if I don't uh, my expectation, my naive expectation is that if I tried to run run this um i would i would get the same results you know but i it turns out i need to actually splice splice it, these 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 arguments so like the interface is exactly the same well it's yeah this exact exact example doesn't really work but it would be um cases more often where you are taking a um the argument to our bind to be isn't dots it's some specific thing that is a list that then gets treated like dots um, I, mean, I, I don't have a great example for how it's making things more tidy uh, in the examples I pulled up because I just barely looked at them. But um, so it'd be like if our bind to be instead of taking dots took, you know, list of args as just a single arg. Mm -hmm. And then you inject that directly with our without our lang list to being involved. Um, so then the user doesn't bang, 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 you're bang, bang, banging for them. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's the it, the dot dot dot, and then our lang list two dot 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 kind of un um, undoes some of the the convenience um, because you could just do dot dot dot. You know, you could just pass the dots in that case. Um, but it's where something it's it's more often I think where you have. Um, Functions that have some sort of arguments, and then you you want to pass those over to something like mutate, and so you want to uh, 
stretch out those arguments. You want to turn those arguments yep. into dots. Um, and just to share my other uh, way of looking at this, that uh, the bang, 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 I just see it as the lines are connecting, like connecting rows back to dot, dot, dot. So it's turning rows into dot, dot, dot. Um, if that makes any sense. So the exclamation points kind of are dots with a connection on them uh, because bang, bang, bang is for turning a list into dots. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I am seeing a fair amount. Let's see how many hits. It's uh, 56. Uh, like it's not a ton, but for a weird Rlang function, it's it's not a small number. Um, it's in iGraph, it's in Vetiver, it's in Reader, um, recipes. I wrote, I wrote an internal package that used it in a function because there was some like model I was using, and when you tuned it, it would output a list of hyperparameters. And I wanted to use the output optimal list and without having to do like each one by one, just like inject. You know. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I had ever, or I didn't ever, never noticed this until actually last week, I guess. But um, seeing it in in practice as wheels turning, because I have definitely done the do call or equivalent uh, it, to kind of get something to work, <laughs> and so um, I can imagine using our language or using inject as kind of a shortcut on that. So, cool. I'll have to have a look at those examples uh, hmm. afterwards to try to concret concretize my, my understanding of this. Um, and so I guess like, um, like, like you, John, I, I tried to, whoops. Um, Come up with just a, like a list of functions that 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 the guy covered. Maybe we can look at it a little bit greater greater detail. Um, um, I don't purport to understand these fully. <laughs> um, uh, at least not 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 all of them. Um, maybe kind of looking at the, the dot injections piece. Um, uh, looking at the, the splice operator. Whoops, opened up on the monitor. Um. Is this, this is a reference, okay. Um, yeah, so as you're saying, um, splice operator implemented in dynamic dots, injects a list of arguments into function call and provides the same functionality as do call. Where does it work? Um, Taking dynamic dots like list two. Um, inside inject, which we just saw. An interesting example. Sorry, make this a little bigger. <laughs> Actually, this goes a little deeper than I thought it would. Um, yeah. <laughs> it feels almost like a vignette uh, looking at it. Um, yeah. So I have found and kind of be warned of that, that some of their the help docs or like the meta functions, like dot, 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 isn't really a function. And so I think when they were writing their help docs, because it's not like, it doesn't have arguments and it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a normal function. They end up writing basically a vignette. Um, <laughs> They've been doing that with a lot of functions. Like it, I think it was 
somewhere in tidy models that that some of the documentation bits are sort of like expanding out into like here is how you can use it with this set of parameters or this different distinct set and just sort of like going out and showing all of the use cases. That's interesting. I mean, for, for those examples of Gus, I mean, are, are, are they doing kind of two things, like in the sense of um, maybe looking at the arguments and return values and then going and looking at particular use cases? Or, or is it more like what we're seeing in Arlang, where it's maybe something very general, may not have arguments, and so they're just looking at, at use cases? I realized it was actually ggplot that I was thinking of. Where like if we look at the documentation for scale color discrete, I can send the link. Um, they've got an example of like there actually is an injection example as the very first one, um, and then like a few other ones. But I think they've also been doing something neat with um, Roxygen has that parameter to like pull in template documentation from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I think they've been doing that a bit as well. Interesting. And that's sort of contributing to like the long documentation is that they can just write some sort of template that applies to a bunch of the different similar functions. Got and it. And it can go everywhere it needs to. Um, let's see. Let me pivot back to the glue operators. Um, these are mentioned when it, kind of in the context of injecting names. Um, so it's just basic name interpolation. Although, I guess I'm just kind of wondering now um, if one could use either double curly brackets or just curly or just curly brackets. Let's see. Got an example here where they're injecting the name who into a tibble definition. Uh, I see. Okay. I guess this is the case. I guess you're using uh, double curly when you insert an expression rather than just a, a string value. At least that's my understanding. This is one of the ones I just, I still haven't managed to like pick up with the, the curlies. Yeah, I, this is one that was kind of new to me. I, I, I guess I picked up a very little bit of um, Arlang a while back when it, I guess, pre pre curly curly, um, and I was delighted to see that you could use glue expressions to provide names instead of just you know like quoting your variable name and like Arlang as label and uh, yeah, and then evaluating that. But I've not caught up with this yet, uh, actually. I don't, yeah, I don't think I have actually used the glue syntax anywhere yet, but uh, that was one of the, uh, just reading this makes this club worthwhile. <laughs> I didn't know that existed. And I, I have, you know, every time it's like, oh God, how do you do this? You gotta yeah. do, you know, is it, it's not in sim, it's a, as simple as it, you know, anyway, but no, it's just glue syntax now, so much yep. easier. Let me actually read this. Uh, yeah, I we're, we're trying to figure out, at least I was trying to figure out when when you use the the single curly brackets and double curlies. My crude understanding is when it's just simply a name, it's just simply a character string. You can use a single curly bracket. So when it's a proper expression mm. uh, that needs to be evaluated to string, then 
or some are somehow like coerced to string. Um, I guess you're using double curly. Okay. Oh, here so, we go. Technically, it diffuses a function argument, calls as label on the expression, and then inserts the result in the string. Okay, so it diffuses it. Ah, 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 I see, I see. Okay. I think I get it. Oh, okay. Because you're here, I, I, you know, in this example, um, you're passing one plus one, so it just it um, quotes the expression. It doesn't just send simple... two, like yeah. So it's behind the scenes calling as label, which just makes it into a, a, a string as my crude understanding of as label uh, transforms yeah. our objects into short human readable descriptions. I'm not, I was never sure about this human readable part, what else they're doing. Um, okay, what is the return value? Transform, okay, transformation to string. All right, there's a lot going on here. sure what this means yet. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that what's the deal with walrus or colon equals is interesting. Um, oh, <laughs> and the answer is no. <laughs> if you read uh, if you oh, into that issue. They can't make it work. Huh. So, uh, so going, it, you know, take ignore that. It will always be colon equals. Hmm. What was the trick? There's a way that you can see the dev version. Does it? Um, I think I'll still think of it in the way in which you mentioned, yeah. John, is just like, assume this is a glue expression and somehow it needs to be, uh, um, what is it, digested. Uh, yeah, yeah, like it, it. It's a good mental model. It, right, it would be confusing to me if some if you didn't need that. <laughs> like, it seems like you would like, um, and you know, turns out, yes, yeah, they can't make it work without the colon, so. Um, cool. And actually, uh, I'm keeping this open because they closed that issue 1296, but they did not in the dev version remove that note from the this help. So uh, that needs to be fixed, or it will be very or remain very confusing. I wonder how long that's been closed. Oh, just <laughs> this month, or last month, I guess now, uh, May second. And so, hot off the press. <laughs> um, the that last note using glue syntax and packages um, beyond just use package glue. If you're not actually using glue, I, um, use this. Use import from glue glue. Mm is a way to make things not complain because you have to put glue in imports, but you don't actually use glue directly anywhere. And so you have to like re or just import the glue or any really any function from glue that you don't actually do anything with um, just to make CRAN happy basically. Well, uh, to make uh, just to make checks happy. Um, so another thing to update in <laughs> so. It's, it was funny, I had never, or I had always like found ways to kind of work around that. 
And then I happened to see a conversation in the R packages repo where they were like, should we mention how to deal with this? And I can't, I don't even remember how they resolved it. But I was like, oh, it was helpful to me. So yes, you should mention it. Yeah, so this is, this is actually very, you're right, John, this is very good to know. Um, um, I guess we're not gonna digest everything. Maybe, let's see, what else is there dynamic dots? We looked at last time, list two, perhaps. Um, this is one I, in, in honesty, I feel like I've used without fully understanding it. Um, yeah, so they're saying here that it's it's basically the equivalent of list, but has additional features. Um, And so it just takes a collection. Um, just takes some dots. Um, yeah. So a named list. Okay. Well, I, honestly, I don't know. Like I've used it. And I have had multiple times, I feel like, where I've used list two, and then I'm like, wait, does that need to be list two? And I just delete the two, and it still does exactly what oh. I wanted. So I don't know. Um, makes this list. If it's needed. <laughs> like, I guess it can it lets you, the user use bang 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 which i guess is kind of nice cuz someone upstream from you might be doing something complicated um so that, i guess that makes sense i think that's it i think that's all it does is it lets the user use bang 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 without the user having to use our lang inject and so you're like, if you're importing Arlang anyway, you might as well use list two on the dots mm. in case someone wants to do something fancy with your package. I think that's the idea here. Um, I really can't remember the context in which I've used list two. <laughs> or, nor more importantly, like why why I, I used it. Right. I'll, I'll have to dig. <laughs> um, inject. This one also kind of puzzles me. Um, uh, inject value to expression with injection support. There's an article about that. Um, yeah, I think we have that in another week. Okay. Splicing Let me lists. Confirm that. Um, um, oh, wait. No, I think <laughs> I think that article is what you just did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I think it is. Just oh, actually, okay. Back. So I did. I did steal this example from. from yeah, that. I think I uh, maybe I expanded on it slightly. I rewrote mm -hmm. some things, but okay. All right. So expert is an argument to evaluate. Injected objects and expressions. I. I look at this, I mean, as of like today, <laughs> this is the function that lets you use non Arlang things as if they're Arlang things. You just wrap them in inject and then they will work with bang, 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 and they'll work with walrus and, uh, you know, bang, bang, and whatever. I think that's the idea. Yeah, maybe so that's if, maybe that's yeah. right. 
because so other, otherwise the function yeah. would have to have um, uh, what do you call it uh, injection support. This would have to be like a tidyverse function, right? And so, um, so yeah, you can just use that to to get around uh, or to you know any place where you would use like do call or. Um, and I can never remember the Arlang equivalent because they they tried to standardize names, which means if you've learned the base name, it's not it's I don't think it's call two that is do call. I don't know. So um it might be either there is call, call two. Call two exists, but I, I want to call. say call oh. two is like call. Yeah. And, and then I think eval is do call. Let me text that. So it's gonna get too many hits. I'm gonna program in um um or exec. Ah yeah I think exec is do call. Yeah. Um, so I can never remember that. And part of that is because, oh, you don't actually probably need exec. You probably actually want inject. <laughs> mm. Got it. Yeah. Um, but that's another one where I'll probably want to go through and do some uh, searches and see what do they use? Because, you know, a lot of these functions that, you know, that's what they do in their packages in order to give it um, injection support and things like that. So uh, they take some base function and then use inject or they use exec or they use list two or you know different combinations thereof. So um, kind of seeing what they do is definitely helpful. Um, but uh, I think you have another meeting to get to. And so, yeah, pretty uh, soon. Yeah. <laughs> One, one uh, like maybe kind of closing question, at least from my side, I remember there was uh, this tidy evaluation book that was sort of a kind of the, hmm. the I guess at the time, like the Arlang cookbook, uh, if I could put it in those terms and it never got fully drafted out. Now I see it as archived. Do you know if there are any uh, similar efforts uh, to, 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 to do that or or did, is your sense of like the vignettes are meant I perform that role because in a sense they do they do have they don't call it a cookbook exactly but it's you know, programming patterns right um, yeah i i do think that um the r line package down is largely what is meant to serve that role and presumably advanced r third edition in a few years <laughs> because second edition came out right before embrace um that one still just kills me because advanced R second edition was out of date before it was printed <laughs> while it was, while it was in print, you know, being printed, they invented the embrace idea. Um, and I, I, I'm, I feel like it has to be that, you know, Hadley got past the working with the book. He's like, okay, I don't have to think about that anymore. And had a conversation with uh, Lionel and was like, Oh, Damn it. <laughs> like, yes, that's how it should work. <laughs> but whatever. You know, so will that will that be one of your questions for Hadley on the 29th? <laughs> uh, I don't know yet. Um, maybe. Uh, I don't remember if I have talked to him about that before, but I, I feel like it's probably a little bit of a sore spot. But yeah, I finished the book and then immediately, I mean, obviously it, it's only like one chapter that is different because they, the chapter on metaprogramming has all about bang bang and in quo and doesn't have another option um and so i think you know at this point it's so much more mature they have a whole family of functions like i don't think inject existed but maybe it did and i just didn't know about it um they they kind of clarified the concept and so i am anxious to see and i think largely our line documentation kind of is at least the metaprogramming section of advanced R version three. And, uh, you know, and, and the other stuff that we're going to get into is also stuff that is, you know, relevant for advanced R programming. So.
Um, yes, but yeah, I'll, I will announce uh, for sure once we have that date nailed down, but it looks pretty likely that that's what we will do. And so we will see everyone there. It looks like Tan is signed up for uh, next week here. So we're good to go there. Still need someone for the 16th for what are closures, closures and when are they needed, um, which I think is going to be a good follow up to this <laughs> of, okay, but when, you know, a lot of this is, it's somewhat repetitive, but in a good way, like, okay, I'll get there eventually. I'll understand this stuff, hopefully, by the end of reading all this doc, documentation. So. Anyway, all right. Uh, thank you very much, Arthur, and I will see everyone on Slack. Thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> no thank problem. You. See you next week. Yeah, bye.